guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And in that light, I'm always looking to interview entrepreneurs, influencers, thought leaders, sharing their insights with the world. So today we have... Kagan Hadley, and he's a Amazon bestselling author, and he's a therapist providing emotional and psychological coaching therapy and content for individuals with injuries. So um, today is going to be talking all about growing a side business, breaking out, uh, social media, blogging, and it's going to be a fantastic conversation. So I'll let Kagan welcome or welcome him and introduce himself. So Kagan, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was great to connect via Podmatch, and mm-hmm. um, it's uh, tell us more about your background, your mm-hmm. experiences, and we'll go from there. Yeah. So I am, uh, as you alluded to, I'm a doctor of occupational therapy. I specialize specifically in individuals who have had an you know an athletic injury, whether they're you know, formerly they're a, a competitive athlete or a weekend warrior, and they're suffering psychologically due to those injuries. And that's that's kind of who I specialize in. And I built this um, you know, business on the, the backside of what I do as a quote unquote day job. So my day job, I'm a um, neurological and psychiatric clinical researcher. I'm a, a um, associate director of medical writing at um, Supernus Pharmaceuticals. So I, I, I write, uh, writing is a large portion of my day, but I, but I also love um, connecting with people who have struggles that I have went through myself because I, I was an athlete for, um, you know, approaching two decades. I played uh, American football. And as a result of that, I tore uh, both of my ACLs requiring four surgeries. So I'm acutely aware of all the, the you know, the types of issues um, these individuals can have. And, um, you know, obviously everyone's journey is slightly different, but it, it, as long as you're able to connect with them kind of on the overarching sentiment, um, it's, it's, it's extreme. It's extremely rewarding, for sure. Yeah, very interesting. Um, and then tell us, um, especially you know, you come from the medic, both we're both healthcare, and um, you know, people assume healthcare is just one thing, just seeing patients, but there's a lot of different skill sets. How does one take skills they know and break into new industry? Yeah, so um, you know, for for example, I, I always uh love to write that was kind of something i did recreationally like i I, i've always wanted to be a writer i I just um unless i wrote you know harry potter 12 or something i I didn't think i was going to ever uh make make money doing that so i I was always just kind of writing um and then i then i found after uh, undergrad i became pretty acutely aware that as a um you know having a degree in pre-med it doesn't really qualify you to do much of much of anything. <laughs> uh, when, when I was, you know, trying to save money for grad school, um, I saw that in, in the area I was in, there was a contract research organization and I had done undergrad or undergraduate research. So I figured that was, you know, the same. I figured they'd have a lab in the building and, oh boy, um, th- th- there definitely wasn't a lab. So I, I got my foot in the door at a contract research organization and um, through my writing talents, I was able to start writing uh, regulatory documents, which are the documents necessary for FDA approval. So if you're you're trying to approve a new drug, the FDA has to see you know a certain number of documents, and someone has to write those documents. So I was able to do that, and then I, I've also been rather interested in kind of the health tech uh, sector, kind of the the mix between cryptocurrency and health tech. So mm-hmm. I, in like many people, just kind of threw their money in, in the you know, in the um, fire, essentially, because it's it's very volatile, but I was interested in more of the technology. So 
um, as part of that, instead of doing conventional investing uh, over, you know, the last two, three years, because I'm very um, knowledgeable in technical writing. So I offer my services to those startups to, you know, write, write the documents for them because I, if it's good enough for the FDA, if it's an unregulated space like the cryptocurrency market, it seems to be a, um, you know, I'm, I'm plenty qualified to do that. So I've dipped my hand in kind of that because I was interested and I, I wanted to be involved because I believe in it, but I, I don't want to just um, throw my money away because uh, financially I'm extremely, you know, conservative in what I invest in and in, in my beliefs as far as that goes. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I know a lot of uh, journalists, they, you know, write about new existing industries, which is quite interesting. And you're not, you know, risking your, your hard earned capital, but um We'll talk about, you know, you know, you talk about getting past trauma, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but we'll talk about like blogging, for example, because you blogged on the side, you know, you grew a side business and then now you now you write, you know, for a, a, a health you know organization. Tell us what writing has done for you personally and professionally. So so as a therapist, I actually spend I mean, I do spend some time, you know, talking to people, but it's actually through writing um, and, and content that I'm spending most of my time. Uh, so, I mean, writing has really given me everything. It's, you know, allowed me to have a very comfortable, you know, income for my family. And it's allowed me to, you know, share my experiences to help others um, who are in similar, similar situations. And not only that, I mean, uh, is life, you know, uh, tends to happen. Everyone goes through different kinds of traumas. Um, as I started to get out of after my second ACL surgery, I'll take a step back and tell you why. Um, after my second ACL surgery that kind of put me off the field for good, um, I kind of fell down the dark hole, I, I suppose. So I started abusing substances. I um, made really poor relationship decisions. I ended up in a relationship with who I would find out would be a uh, very severe alcoholic. And due to that, relationship, I endured a lot of emotional abuse, kind of culminating in me being suicidal for a time. And, you know, I, I knew at that point, I, my life was either going to go one of two ways. And I decided, obviously, to get help and get out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and th there was a big struggle with me, not only um, then, but right after when I decided going to therapy, I had a hard time um, seeing improvement, just the way my brain works, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy wasn't um, particularly working, even though it's supremely, um, you know, effective for a lot of people. Um, and I started going to an ACT therapist or acceptance and commitment therapy therapist, and I, I saw help right away. And it was through those journaling, um, you know, prompts that I got that really pulled me out of, um, you know, where I was and through, you know, the couple of years of journaling, it actually created my book, uh, torn for me. I mean, it, there was very little, uh, writing I actually had to do after my uh, therapeutic journaling. So it, it was very organic in the way it came out. So it, it essentially, um, writing has made my life, but also saved my life. So. Interesting. And then you talk about, um, you know, which is, you know, it's always, uh, you know, outlet, you know, when I wrote my book, you know, it is more of an outlet to, you know, get the message out there, share the story. I didn't have to answer it a hundred times. I could just, you know, refer the book. Um, and then you talk about, Recovering, so psychological flexibility, trauma, healing from trauma. Tell us your thoughts and your emotions around these ideas. Yeah, so uh, psychological flexibility is kind of an overarching um, term where you can put um, ACT or, you know, relational frame theory underneath it. And again, ACT is the main intervention intervention I use for, you know, my clients, so those individuals who are struggling with um, you know, the psychological challenges associated with physical injury. Um, and essentially, it's for, for those who aren't aware, if you've heard of cognitive behavioral therapy, it's a uh, very well proven um, intervention. But uh, Dr. Stephen Hayes, uh, I think it was in the 60s or 70s, I, I, I couldn't tell you the exact time, but he started accumulating a lot of um, literature on ACT. Um, and it, it's kind of like a close cousin to cognitive behavioral therapy. There's just a slight difference in how you're going about things and what the goals of the intervention is. So for, for example, um, for CBT, you're wanting to kind of minimize the symptoms of your, your, your illness, whatever the, you know, DSM says 
you know, you, whichever uh, slot you fit under. But for ACT, I mean, ACT takes into consideration that no matter how healthy or unhealthy you are, there's going to be more difficult times ahead. Um, so it's giving you the tools necessary to, you know, wet, weather those storms in, in the most effective and efficient way is how I like to describe it. So. Yeah. Um, interesting. And um, tell us about, um, you talk about breaking out and how to use what you know to get where you want. Yeah. Uh, so again, that, that kind of goes back to, I'm one of those people who, one of the reasons I chose uh, occupational therapy is because it's it's very, very flexible. So uh, as you know, uh, being a physician, many, many times, you know, you're, you're a cardiologist or, you know, you're an endocrinologist or, or whatever. And there, you can't really, because of the amount of schooling you went to, you can't really switch um, what you're doing clinically, um, even though obviously it's an extremely important job. Uh, with occupational therapy, it's extremely broad. So we we treat the entire individual, you know, physically, psychologically, you know, the the, the whole kind of pack holistically. I mean, that's that's why we're a holistic provider, mm -hmm. and uh, that's important for me is because I, I, I there's a lot of entrepreneurial type things I want to uh, do. Uh, so, for example, I, I know how to write it is. I'll give you a specific example towards me. I love to write um, and I want to write content that, you know, matters. I, I'm not really doing this for money. I have my pharmaceutical job that maybe someday I'll be able to leave, but I want to help people um, through my content, uh, you know, to, to make a difference. Because if you, if, I feel if you're not making a difference in what you're spending day in, day out doing, there, there's really no purpose to do it. So my content is either, you know, focused on tools that people can actively use to get past those issues or um, I'm, I'm currently working on you know uh, more content where people uh, can avoid surgery as much as possible for knee joints uh, because e even myself I'm told that I, I should have a knee surgery um, or a total knee surgery again in the in the near future just due to the damage that I had but with a lot of experimenting I've done I found ways where you can kind of alleviate that and hopefully um, provide more, um, you know, longevity in my life. So essentially, if you find out what you have the most pain in your life, uh, for me, it was my injuries and my mental health, you'll, you'll generally find a passion underneath that. And if you dig, because most people kind of avoid their pain for, for obvious reasons, it doesn't feel good. But if you, you dig into that, you're going to find something you're very passionate about in a specific group of people that would give you a lot of um, joy to help. That, that's one thing because you, you can use the skills you already know many times. For me, it's writing. For me, it's, you know, my therapeutic background. Um, a lot of times people have the skills necessary to help those that they're very passionate about. You know, some people are passionate about numbers. Some people, you know, I mean, there, there are certain things that you already have the skills to do. If you dive into, you know, what's really caused you uh, struggle in the past um, and kind of peel back the layers, you, you might find something that would give your life a lot of meaning if, if you're struggling with that. I know burnout is a, um, you know, a very real issue in the medical community right now. And I think that's, um, you know, advice that I give on a regular basis to a lot of my, you know, classmates. I, I haven't been out in the, you know, uh, field too long, but I already have classmates who are struggling with, you know, um, burnout and those kinds of things. So. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, this is fascinating. I think burnout is kind of a universal thing. It's more of a based on our culture. One thing you talk about is joint specific training methods, which is very interesting. And what is wrong with current physical training in regard to joint specific? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's came out more uh, recently, especially um, if you've seen the knees over toes guy um, stuff, his is targeted to a very general audience. I'm more so looking at the individuals again, who are trying to prevent um, total knee surgery. So there, there's slight differences in what you have to do but just like anything else if you know uh you know chris if, if you wanted a strong biceps would it really be you know um in your best interest to avoid stressing your biceps it, you know at all times you know avoid any kind of workout or any kind of exercise where you would stress your bicep and i you you probably wouldn't do that so i mean the same it's kind of the conventional wisdom not to knock you know, physical therapists or surgeons or any, they're all extremely talented in what they do. But if they haven't went through some of these challenges, especially with the knee, they don't, they don't know what it feels like, just like, I don't know what it's like to 
provide surgery and things. But on this side, um, I, I definitely have to say that if you slowly and incrementally over time challenge the joint in um, you know, pain-free ways, obviously we're not going to go through that, but if you can do that over the long term, the, the amount of um, improvements you can see is just uh, crazy. There's things I can do now that I never would have you know, been able to even dream of doing after I, I just kind of avoided anything but lifting weights um, after I had my last ACL injury, just because I, I don't want to hurt it again. But there's a way to structure that. There's a lot of, you know, isometric type things, a full range of motion type things that aren't typically prescribed, but that's what I spent a lot of my time doing. And that's um, the kind of, uh, you know, programs I helped to provide to my clients. Fascinating. Excuse me. Um, very fascinating discussion. Um, really interesting on, especially your writing and how you um, broke into new markets and, um, you know, how you use it as a personal development tool. Um, I know you're on, how can people follow you on social media, visit your website, contact mm -hmm. team, you and um you know look into you of course um so i am um not super active on social media <laughs> I, I do have to preface this with saying I, i'm very active on linkedin that's kind of the, my most active uh social media um i am on uh, instagram and twitter at the acl therapist or you can always find me at my website the acl therapist um or keeganhadley.com so right. e e either one of those um i'm always around and i'm I'm um, excited to talk to people and collaborate. Yeah. And for all the listeners out there, uh, Keegan's resources will be in the links and show notes. Be sure to follow him on all his, on his uh, LinkedIn. And uh, with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. It was a great discussion. Thank you so much, Chris. I hope you really enjoyed that wonderful inspirational motivational piece again if you wherever you are listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week